a conversation with former city commissioner Kim Canada. Stay tuned. My college offers classes that meet my educational and career goals. With opportunities outside of the classroom where the faculty know me by name. My college can prepare me for my career. I can earn an associate's degree and transfer credits to a bachelor's. My college is a state college within the university system of Georgia. My college offers courses that fit my schedule. It's where excellence begins. We are. We are. We are. We are GHC, Georgia Highlands College. Welcome to Community Watch. Greg. Doug. How are you doing? Doing great, sir. And yourself? I'm fine. I'm just fine. Um, our guest today, uh, we have had on the show before, but it was during campaigns for commission. Uh, so I always think it's interesting when we get a chance to talk to someone who's been in office after they have left office. True, but we, you know what, you just said something that made me think too. We have to do a better job extending an invitation while they're in office too. Mm -hmm. The campaign in office, then after. Yeah. See, we get the well, full true. campaign, you know. Um, well, you get on that. <laughs> it won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I uh, expect today's discussion to be uh, really interesting, cover. Um, Commissioner Canada's time as a commissioner and uh, some of his insights about our process. Uh, so stay with us. We'll be right back with our guest after this. Hi. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're very happy to have with us today uh, Kim Canada, City Commissioner Kim Canada, former City Commissioner Kim Canada. Welcome to the show. Thank you, John. Thank you, Greg. Uh, so you have been out of office two weeks? Since January the 11th was my actually the actual last day yeah. is when the new ones took their oath of office yeah. was my last day. And you mentioned um, while we're waiting to begin today that um, actually the day we're taping this is your first meeting to miss. It's my first day that in 12 years that I'm not at a commission meeting on the regular scheduled yeah. commission meeting. Um, and is that a relief? Um, I th the relief came from me when I made the decision to retire. Uh, uh, the the uh, uh, and when I gave when I gave my little farewell speech on the uh, December 28th meeting, which was our actual last full meeting, uh, I told the um, I told the public that was there and some of the staff and and everybody that I know at some point in my career, at some point down the road, I'll be asked what was the most difficult thing I had to do as a commissioner, and mm -hmm. I told them that night saying bye was the most difficult thing I've ever had to do as far mm -hmm. as my term as a commissioner uh, because the people are, are who you enjoy being around and and being a city commissioner isn't as bad as you know what some people perceive it to be is where you get phone calls in the middle of the night or people's calling you all the time uh, you know uh, upset about this or upset about that the city has a great mechanism in place and for it ever to get to a commissioner uh, it's it's a you know, the, all the processes have been gone through and somebody hadn't really got satisfied. So for me in my 12 years, my phone never rang that much after hours and never was cornered in buildings to say, hey, I'm not happy with you. But uh, but I always did take mm -hmm. time to respond to everybody whenever I did get those and and try to take care of it. But um, I'm, I'm curious now, um, 
our commissioners, um, you know, we see them at the, the meetings every two weeks. What are the responsibilities that, that many people aren't aware of beyond just those primary meetings? Well, the, the, John, the best way to understand is how the structure of the city commission is, is set up through the charter. And the city commission in Rome is a city manager ran government, which means that the city manager operates everything below his position. He oversees everything. The commissioners have nothing to do with anything under the city managers as far as staffing, personnel, and, and uh, procedures go. Mm -hmm. uh, disciplinary actions or anything like that, that's handled by the city manager. The only person the city commissioners actually manage and fire, hire, disciplinary action is the city manager. And so with that being said, then our responsibility as a city commission is that of policy, procedure, budgets, uh, and, and the commissioner's activities and, and uh, approving, you know, having meetings and approving new policy, new procedure, approving bids, approving budgets, approving changes in the ordinances and, and along that line. So what you don't see a commissioner doing is going to all the committee meetings that they're assigned to where all the policy for all, when you see a policy come before the city commission, it has done went through many steps before it has gotten there. Mm -hmm. and, and those steps involve two to three commissioners at each step that's not there, you know, that's at a committee meeting developing that policy or that boat or that uh, uh, ordinance or, or a budget request item that needs to be voted on or mm -hmm. a procedure to move forward on that has developed that. So it may have been going on for six months, nine months, three months or whatever to get in development before it ever comes to the commission. And in that, like there's, um, I wish I could tell you exactly how many committees there are. Each commissioner serves on about, uh, outside the commission, the two commission meetings that you go to each month, each commissioner serves on at least three or four committees where they have to attend meetings throughout the month and those meet once a, once a month. So you have those committee meetings to go mm -hmm. to, which last anywhere from an hour to two hours. Then you have your, what I call, uh, uh, community invitations where you are invited to other functions in the community mm -hmm. to, to be the ambassador of the city for the commissioners. And also you have emails that people are sending you questioning and asking questions and then responding back to staff, the city manager, to other commissioners, uh, to the public. Uh, and then phone calls. Uh, with the technology, phone calls have become less and less and emails have become more and more, yeah. which is a good thing because it, it gives you time to sit down and think about. Uh, I always like the emails better because it gives me time to sit down and, and kind of uh, take into what the person's asking or the complaint is or the question is to give me an opportunity to, uh, to either research it or everything because I, I, I've, I've always been of the mindset that if you call and ask me something, I didn't know the answer. I told you exactly that. I, didn't, I don't know the answer, but give me a, a day, give me a couple hours, I'll find out the answer and, and call you back. With an email, it's a lot easier. You can pick up that phone, research it, or do whatever you need to do, research it, give yeah. it back and shoot it back to them and get it back to them where they have a lot of information available that you normally wouldn't have. Hmm. Let me ask you this. As a former commissioner, <clears throat> do you think on the whole that the citizens of Rome do a great job as far as engaging the process. Because a lot of times I know people, when you see some of the meetings on TV, people may be angry at the meetings, but listen to what you're saying. By the time you get to the meeting, it's been vetted. Uh, there's been a process of vetting it before you even got to the meeting. So do the people of Rome, the citizens of Rome in your, in your mind, do a great job of actually engaging the process in early on? Yeah, the, well, there's, there's two steps to that. Uh, the, the vetting process comes like if it's, if it's an, an issue carried through committee, then you know, the meet notice are made, the agendas are made, and, and, and any citizen can come to any committee meeting at any time and speak either you know, comments about or not against, or, or you know, their, their concern or non-concern or support or, or non-support of, of anything that's going on in a committee meeting. The vetting process on, like, say, a zoning issue is a completely different thing because it don't go, it doesn't go through our committees. It goes, you know, it's applied for, goes to the planning commission. The com planning commission is is heard through a public hearing kind of thing, and then it comes to the city or county commission for a public another public hearing, which is the opportunity for the public to vet. Now, those type the public the uh, zoning issues, those type public hearings are are very well. 
uh, you know, the, the process is done very well where the public is very well knowledgeable about it. They know they've got to be there. They come in and they vet the stuff. The downside to the other side is, is on the committees, most people don't pay any attention that there's a lot of important things going on in there. And, and there's been times where I've heard people say, and I've even had it said to me is, well, there was no need for us to say anything because it was already done before it ever got here. Well, true, all the process of the the uh, the research, the development, the uh, you know the the hacking out of what what we could agree on, not agree on in committee, has been worked out without any input if nobody was there. But then when it comes to the meeting, there's still a certain point of discussion. It's not a it's not a guaranteed vote because you may always have commissioners that get a different feeling of what the information they're getting the final the final uh, written document that they may be uncomfortable with. So, but it, that process is probably less involved even though it should be more involved with the public. I mean, there's nothing you can do to make it more involved, but the public should know that that's some of the things they should be focusing on as well as the zoning, uh, as, as well as being involved in the process. You know, it, um, hearing you talk about uh, the committees and, and other responsibilities of a commissioner, is it, is it possible for a commissioner to m maintain a, a career outside of being on the commission? Well, I was thinking. Uh, well, I have. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I, and I'll say this, the, the role of the commissioner has never been a full-time role, although it turns into a full-time role. Uh, and, and it turned into a full-time role because, uh, for, for me and for the other commissioners, because of, of what you feel is you have to do to, to get the things, you know, to get things done that you need to do, you have to involve more time than what a part-time could be. That's not to say that, you know, I don't, I didn't go every day to the commission. They may be two or three days in a row, I never had to deal with anything at the city, and then all of a sudden I get hit and have to be doing something two or three days in a row to get it taken care of or, mm -hmm. or following up on it and everything. Uh, but the opportunity uh, for, doing the commission and still keeping a full-time job as possible as long as your employer is, is is good with it because the convenience is not it's not a convenient schedule by any means you can't just say okay well we're going to meet for your convenience or this convenience you got to keep in mind there's public involvement that's you got to try to make it where they can be there you got staff people that have to be there that you want them there during the normal hours so most all the committee meetings are done anywhere between seven o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the afternoon. So anywhere in that time frame, there's a committee meeting going on. Um, commission meetings are always after five. So if you got a nine to five job, get to a committee meeting, not bad. Uh, but then when you involve all the other small things, like the sometimes you have to go talk to people and you have to do that at their convenience, and then they may not be home at. Uh, two o'clock in the afternoon, they may not get home to seven thirty at night, so you've got to call them. Say, hey, I'll come by there then. Mm -hmm. So it's not. I'd say it's not for everybody's job or, or job description that they have where they currently work full time that it would work. But for some, it does work out. And for some, you know, for some companies, they like they like the fact that they have a person that's a commissioner that not gives them an edge by any means because there's no commissioner going to give you an edge because mm. nobody wants to go to jail. <laughs> uh, so everything's done fair and above board. But it does, you, you know, some people like the fact that they have a commissioner uh, or an elected official that works for their company and are flexible with how they can go to the meetings if it's understood up front. Yeah. Well, I, I would think though, even though everything is done up, up on board and it's fair, but still just having a commissioner that works at, works there you have insight. I mean, stuff that yeah, I may not attend a meeting, but you to clearly have somebody that's a commissioner. You clearly have more access to the to insight of what's actually happening, which uh, I would think would be a great <laughs> would be great just to be able to say, hey, what did happen or what's going on with something like yeah. that. So yeah. I can see how yeah. some companies would like just to be able to have that access of information. Yeah, it gi it gives you too. I mean, not just from a company standpoint, but. Um, you, 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 and I think y'all have done this long enough that it wouldn't surprise you, but you'd be surprised how many people in the public don't understand the process enough to think that, oh well, well he's, you know, he or she's on the take because they already had made a decision before they ever got here. You know, uh, it, 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 what I've always told them is, is there's certain things I can do by law and certain things I can't do by law. And if I can't do it by law, I'm not going to do it because I'm not going to jail for anybody. And if it's by law, I can't do it. And it's in the best interest of the city 
and it works out for seed, then that's the way I'm going to do it. You know, and that's what you that's what you elected us for is to is to do it in that manner. Well, we're coming up on a break here. Stay with us. We'll be back with Kim Canada right after this. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to Community Watch. We're having a conversation with Kim Canada, who has up until very recently been a Rome City Commissioner and y'all were starting a really good conversation during the break. So, what were you? What was your question? Because that was well, that was it. I was. It just seems to me that some issues, like the Burwell, Bear, Burwell Creek, or whatever, some farms of the city are very engaged in the process from beginning to end. But then it seems like there's certain segments of the population that come in at the end of something, and they're not engaged early. And it just you know, but that's. At that point, it's nothing really the commissioners can do that the process has been going on for months. Mm -hmm. And so I was just wondering, uh, Mr. Canada, is that, you know, the use, is that kind of common? That, you know, some issues just kind of, no one's involved and then all of a sudden it's time to vote, city commission meeting, everybody want to. That's, that's the worst situation that we can encounter because every meeting is open, every meeting is advertised, all things are very transparent. Uh, but, but you're right, you, you do, and, and it's usually in zoning. Uh, e either in zoning or planning or uh, zoning is the big one I mean because uh, you can have you, you know when you see the little zoning sign out in an area that the zoning that there's been a zoning request to change this well you know that's the trigger for the community or the person sees that sign to pick the phone up call and say hey what's going on here and okay you call they explain to you exactly what's going on at that point is when you need to get involved uh, and that process, you can you can you can vent your frustrations, you can vent your concerns, or you can vent your support. And so at that point, you know you're, you're in the you're in the beginning of it, uh, where we have the biggest issues and controversy with zoning or any kind of thing that goes on is is that that group that gets involved late, long after the foundations have done been done, long after all the agreements have been done, and long after anything can be reversed. But then you're made to feel like you uh, you are doing it to, to to go against what everybody else is wanting. Uh, the Burwell Creek's a good example. I mean, we uh, we have been working on that for seven years, but it was this last year that the the group got actively involved in wanting changes and didn't feel like they'd been involved in the process. But at the point that we were at in that process was no matter what they were wanting done, we couldn't go back and take away what had already transpired, even though that wasn't satisfactory to them. So it had the appearance that we was not supportive of their uh, concerns, but that their concerns had not been brought up until after the fact. I mean, that we had had a small input of uh, people concerned, but when that whole process started, there was, there was very little input from, from any major groups or any major people that this was an issue. I'm not so sure if it was that point that nobody thought it would ever happen or nobody ever thought anybody would ever do it, but then as it slowly started going along, and then of course the recession hit around 2005, six, or six, seven, and eight, so everything died down, there was no activity, mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't get anybody interested in even thinking about it, and then all of a sudden when things started going back up around 2009, 2010, then a little more, in, you know, a little more interest got stimulated. The building started picking back up. Retail uh, interest got high again, especially with the uh, the uh, Publix shopping center getting built and the uh, and the uh, and the the support it had and and the success this had in that little area right there. So then it, it got picked back up again. Well, then all of a sudden the realization of hey, this may really happen. We may need to do something. But at that point, those the processes had been put in place so that it was the, at the t it, and it still is, it was the Ledbetter's call on whether they wanted to do it or not because it had already been put in place. Uh, you know, you can't go back and say, I mean, you're just looking for trouble if you go back and say, oh yeah, well we've done this, but now we're not going to let you do it. 
Uh, but so really, it's so w what I was thinking is that you, people got to get involved early. You in need to stay involved in the process. I mean, that, that it, it's it's always best for a community, a citizen, a, a neighborhood, anybody to just stay in focus of what's going on in their town, so that they're not surprised. And if they are, you know, if you do see the zoning signs, pick the phone up and call. Don't wait till. Uh, you read in the paper, yeah, this was approved for this zone, and then pick the phone up and call me and say, why didn't you do anything? Said, well, you know, I'm sitting up here, I didn't have a single complaint. Nobody mm -hmm. called me and said he was upset with this going in here. He's doing it legal. Uh, everything's above board. Everything meets all the criteria. So I can't deny him his opportunity because uh, you called me 10 days after the fact. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very deliberate process, and that mm -hmm. process is, is drawn out so that it gives people opportunity and especially w with one like Barwell Creek, which was, w you know, was was a long-term development, there, there was plenty of intervention times that, you know, and, and they were some early. But I'm t what I'm saying is that it was not as strong as it came well, out the toward the end. You uh, you were saying uh, when we were talking before we started uh, the program that you had several several things in mind when you decided to run for office and decided to to go back for re-election twice. So what were some of those things that were important to you that you wanted to see through? The, uh, well, at the, when I first got elected, I was, uh, I, I had gotten uh, what I'd call recruited by several commissioners that knew George Griffin was coming off, and then George Griffin had called me and talked to me about if I was interested in doing it and mm -hmm. said that they'd felt like I'd make a good fit with with the group that was there and, and he he would like to see me take his seat if I could you know run the election and win the election and I did and at the time there you know I was all new to it but there was a lot of things transpiring that that I wanted to get on board because I if you look the city commission has always been a very stable group of people no matter who was on the commission and they always was um, seemed to get everything done that they set out to do or, or what appeared to do is but when you know when you get in office, then you realize that there's a lot of things that come through there that that, that never gets to go forward because of money or because of just the you know the the, the, the needs that it need to do it don't go through. But then there's some things that get to go through. For me at that time, it was you know it was the um, uh, of course we was doing the big water treatment sewer plant, the 38 million dollar water treatment sewer plant, and then uh, then where I was at in the middle when I got reelected for my third, after my first term, the second term, the second term I didn't have nobody run, so it wasn't like I, uh, you know, <laughs> there wasn't nobody to run against me, so yeah. so I just, uh, I stayed. But that second term, and, and that's a good feeling too, when you feel like people's comfortable enough and, and confident enough in you that nobody even runs against you yeah. when you choose yeah. to run, it's a, it's, a, it's a good humbling feeling to have. Uh, that makes you feel like you're at least doing your job right for the, the majority of the voters that would vote for you. Uh, but that the uh, the recycling center was a big issue right th right about the time my, my second term was ending and was going into my f third term, and I was on the I was chairman of the uh, of the uh, solid waste committee at the time, and we were working trying to get that hammered out so that the city of Rome North County lost that recycling component mm -hmm. because at the time it's, it, the the discussion was going to privatize it or either do away with it or or do something, but that that effort that we done develop what's now what the rec recycling center the recycling program and, and the components of it where we sell recycles out so that the, the, there's a profit there and reduce that and and makes it where even though if we break even we still ahead because it's not taking up space at the landfill which costs us a ton of money to maintain so we're keeping that much out of the recycling uh, into the recycling center and in a and in a revenue stream so that it's not going into that landfill and causing a wasted space or, 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 or taking up a space that costs money to maintain so it goes out of an expense stream to a revenue stream. Mm -hmm. So those were two things that were important those to Those were important to me and, and then c the continuation you, you know, of the budget and making sure the recreation deal was a big, big thing too with me. That was, that was very important to me because I'd served on the rec board. So uh, it was important to see that go through and get, get managed out to, to where uh, my goal has always been. I, I always felt like we could, com we, could, uh, we could develop a component so that all the young kids of Rome and Floyd County could participate in programs at no cost or such a low cost that it was really irrelevant to a, to a family no matter what their income level was. Yeah. 
so that they could participate because I grew up being able to, to, to you know, the boys club, the sports and everything, and my family never had to pay a dime. There yeah. were sponsorships, there were uh, programs involved that, you know, I played everything from football to baseball and played my whole life and my family never paid for anything more than a glove or a pair of shoes. You know, the hats, the balls, the bats, the uniforms, everything was paid for by sponsors and programs. And so I just felt like that was a, that, that's a great component to encourage kids to, to get out of the house and to give parents an opportunity for their kids to, to see there's another side of life other than a video game or, mm. or, or sitting in a house not getting any exercise and, and, give that, uh, and give that incentive because maybe that parent can't afford a, 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 a you know, a $100 pair of basketball shoes and then another $100 to get them to play. So if the, we take out part of that component and kind of help them with the other part, then everybody gets a chance. And so that was a, that was a big part. So, you know, so th those are all, I mean, anything that we've done, we, you know, we, we've done as a commission whole, we've, yeah. we, we've done a lot and there's a lot been done and there's always going to be more to be done. But those were some, some pretty big important things at the time. I mean, the, everything that we, we do as a commission and everything I've done as a commissioner has been important, but I just put a little higher marks on those as things that were important for mm -hmm. the community for the long, for the long term. Um, so is, is, there, is there something, a, a project or something either that, that did not occur or that you think uh, the city still needs to work on, um, s something that, that um, wasn't completed? Oh yeah. Uh, the, the probably the, the thing that that I was probably the most frustrated with was the West Third Street motel hotel project because we had initiated the Barron Stadium project and we had initiated that whole buy up with all that property down through there and mm -hmm. developing it so that we can make that a, a very neat sports corridor with the affiliation of the motel. It's seven years later and we still don't have that motel there and yeah. that was one of the projects that I started with and, and, and left and it's still not done and, and if you know the meeting tonight they're still discussing yeah. the funding mechanism for that motel and it was there the whole time so that's one project that I that I am that I continuously are on the phone with the other commissioners about supporting and, and encouraging them to move forward with it and to stay on them and get it done because that is a very big component of that corridor right down through there to give to give benefit to not only the forum but downtown and, uh, and off of downtown now all across the river mm -hmm. on that side to encourage that growth on on this side of the river fifth avenue and, and west third yeah. well we're coming up on another break in just a few seconds here but we'll be back so stay with us don't go away My college offers classes that meet my educational and career goals. With opportunities outside the classroom. Where the faculty know me by name. My college can prepare me for my career. I can earn an associate's degree and transfer credits toward my bachelor's. My college is a state college within the University System of Georgia. My college is affordable. It's close to home. My college has online opportunities. It's where excellence begins. We are. We are. We are GHC, Georgia Highlands College. Welcome back to Community Watch. We've been having a conversation with Kim Canada, former city commissioner. Um, I don't want to run out of time without saying thank you, thank you. for the 12 years of service and um, for, for always being uh, available to us when we called. Y'all called a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't just mean that. Yeah. The big us, but us, us too. But, but John, I tell you, he always got a phone call. <laughs> Um, I wonder, uh, moving forward, if you would be willing to visit us periodically and sure. kind of give us an um, insider's track on sure. stuff. I, f I feel like this is my exit interview from the commission. <laughs> <laughs> no, we want you back. Yeah, okay. I I'll be happy to come <laughs> back, John. Uh, well, thank you. And thank you for being with us this week. We'll see you next time on Community Watch.